Hey there, Sarah Rose here. I just wanted to pop in with you guys and share a quick manifesting story on how you can apply spiritual principles to your sales business to generate more clients. So I was just talking to one of my woo-woo friends in my spiritual circle and we were talking about applying manifesting and spiritual principles to the sales process. And so it got us talking and I just shared the story with her. So I thought I'd hop on here and share this with you real quick. Many of you who follow me know that I also sell real estate. I love multiple streams of income. Real estate's always given me a lot of freedom and flexibility, so I love real estate. And I love applying spiritual principles to business you know, practices. So I've done this with my old brick and mortar business and grew it exponentially overnight with great success right after the grand opening. Um, a quick story about that. I grew the business so quickly based on these spiritual principles and then I sold it to a lady who took over. She kept all the same marketing, she kept all the same branding, she kept all the same everything. I even trained her on it and it completely tanked afterwards. Why? She wasn't working with the same powerful spiritual principles that I was when I owned it. So that's another video. Today I wanted to talk specifically about the service industry and how to generate more clients. Although. This will work in any industry across all businesses and actually all areas of your life when you take these principles and apply them to any area. But I'm gonna talk specifically to the sales-oriented individual watching this video that wants to generate more sales than clients effortlessly. So, I think um, it was like October 28th, maybe October 27th, when I decided I wanted to close another deal for November on top of the deals I was already closing. Because there's this mindset in real estate that November and December just slow down and everything gets really slow. That's just actually didn't even happen, but I decided I didn't want that to happen and so I didn't even buy into that story. I just said, I would like another deal to close in November and I would like it to be an easy breezy deal with a client that is a pleasure to work with that I do not have to spend a lot of time invested in finding the home or anything like that. It's a slam dunk, easy breezy deal. And the next morning I got a call from my ISA and she said, hey, I have this uh, couple, they are have to move, the house that they live in right now is being sold, they need to move right away, they're already pre-qualified, they really love this one house, can you go show it to them? I said, sure. I went and showed them the house, they loved it, we wrote the offer, we got it accepted that day. Uh, we did the inspection within like I think 48 hours, moved straight to appraisal. We could have closed like a week early, um, but the seller didn't want to, so we closed on November 20th, when we could have closed even earlier. Now, what I wanted to point out here, the takeaway from this is, in the real estate industry, you know, a typical realtor when you say oh I want to manifest another deal it's the end of October it's like October 28th and I want it to close in November and I want it to be easy breezy with no time on my part uh, really invest it and have it be a slam dunk deal most people would think the analytical logical brain would come up with all of the reasons why this is not possible so the first thing that you would start to think about if you were like a typical realtor working the typical marketing strategies and things like that would sound something like, you know, well, that's not even 30 days, that's only 30 days away, I would have to already know this person or this buyer or seller or whoever this client is and I start working with them right away. If it was a buyer, you know, that's probably not gonna happen because it's a 30 day contract period from start to finish and I don't even, haven't even shown them any houses yet and it usually takes a while to warm up to a new client, get their likes and dislikes and move forward and then write an offer and then that offer actually has to get accepted and there's a lot of competition in the market so the first offer might not actually get accepted. It might take them a little while to get under contract but even in the best case scenario it's a 30-day escrow period and there's not even that much time left so that can't happen this is only gonna happen if it's a cash buyer that would be like the train of thought if you're going off of what's logical what's reasonable reasonable based on lender timelines normal contractual timelines and things like that so the takeaway here is the first thing you have to do when you want to manifest something is not doubt its death. You have to stop doubting what it is that you desire and what you want to manifest. And realize that you're working with universal energies that have all of the resources at their fingertips to help bring into physical manifested form what it is that you're asking for. So your job is to more get out of the way and release the how release the how. So the first thing I did after I set that as an intention was not try to figure it out. I didn't say, okay, well, 
I want to manifest this new client and I want it to close within like three weeks. So chop, chop, you know, what do I got to do here? I wasn't trying to figure out where do I, who do I got to call? Where do I got to go? Maybe I should hold an open house. Maybe I should do a, a newsletter. Maybe I should run a Facebook ad. Maybe I should go knock on some doors. You know, all of these things were not running through my head. I was not trying to figure it out. You have to release the how. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive because as a business professional, you want to have a business model that works with you that's just, you know, consistently uh, can produce for you, right? Yes, that makes sense. You do want to have a business model that's in line with you. So you do want to know, okay, do I like cold calling? Do I like open houses? Do I like farming? Do I like knocking on doors? What do I like to do? Do I like telemarketing? What can I get up? behind a hundred percent with my energy and do you know really really well obviously you do want to have a business plan and it should be an inspired business plan by what you align with based on what you really like to do I'm talking about also throwing in the mix manifesting extra clients on top of that that you're not even expecting just by aligning your energy and making that part of your process as well random deals that pop up out of nowhere that are easy breezy and close effortlessly and just seemed to be out of the blue. So I was very specific. Another, so releasing the how, right? Not trying to figure it out. I was also very specific with what I've asked for. So I've played around with this quite a bit. Sometimes, you know, I'll ask for the manifestation to be X, Y, and Z deals under escrow and then I'll get them, but not all of them will close and there'll be a hiccup. So you gotta really get a little bit more, spe get specific with what you want. Get as clear as you can, as you know, as clear as you can on your desires. Recognize the doubt that pops up. You have to release a doubt that pops up as you get clear. If you have doubt popping up when you get clear on something, then you're you're crossing your energetic you know frequencies. You're not going to manifest what it is that you're trying to manifest. So you want to get as clear as you can while releasing all doubt and detaching from the outcome. So that's the other part of this. Once you put your manifestation out there or set your intention, you ha you want to be able to release the outcome. And again, I've done this not only with my real estate business, not only with my brick and mortar business, not only with my coaching clients, and not only that they've used the same principles to manifest their coaching clients, but I've also used this within my own personal sphere of friends um, that have medical device sales businesses and stuff like that, where literally things just pop up for them because they're working this process. And the big key, the other big key takeaway of this is detaching from the outcome. So here's what happened. I showed up on November 20th to deliver keys to them and that's when I finally realized I got my manifestation. I didn't even realize I the, my manifestation came into form until the day I was giving him keys and he was standing in the driveway telling me how happy he was about the house and asking me if it was one of the quickest deals I've ever closed. It actually wasn't one of the quickest deals I've ever closed. I've closed deals in like five days. They've been a lot quicker than that but um, over the course of you know my experience as an agent but it was a really quick, easy deal, effortless. And when he said that, he's like, but this was just the easiest deal. It was just closed so easy. I'm so happy. I can't wait to review you and uh, your team. Everything's amazing. And as he was telling me how happy he was and how easy it was, that's when it clicked. I was like, oh yeah, I asked for this. I totally forgot. And I love that because that happens all the time. I forget about my manifestations and then they pop up. Uh, and then you're excited about it. You're like, wow. But that's how detached I was. I was not even paying attention enough to it to recognize it when it manifested. And the call came the very next day with this buyer after I said that that's what I was, you know, looking for. That was my, after I set my intention. That's a pretty big manifestation to just gloss over and miss. I mean, I literally was connected with this person the next morning through my ISA and started working this process and going to the show, you know, the showing and like working the process with a buyer I didn't have the day before. That's a pretty big manifestation to just miss. The reason I missed it is because it was not on my conscious radar anymore. I completely let it go. Okay. Until he was handing me the key, I was handing him the keys and he was telling me how easy breezy this deal was when it clicked and registered with me. It's like, Oh yeah, I did ask for this and I got exactly what I wanted. And not only did I get exactly what I wanted, but I was also in alignment giving keys to someone who was in line getting exactly what he wanted. He was going on and on about how this house was perfect. They saw it online. It looked perfect to them. They loved the layout inside. They loved how the lot was situated so they could drive their RV in and not, you know, get in the way of the cars or parked on the street. And they loved the landscaping. They loved everything about it. 
And when he was going on and on about that, I realized I'm also in alignment. We're both in alignment. I'm in line with exactly my desires and I matched up with someone else that was exactly in line with their desires. So we made the perfect fit and we made the perfect deal happen. And so that's what it's like when you're working in alignment and you detach from the outcome and you release the how and you follow, you know, whatever nudges come, whatever nudges or whatever spiritual breadcrumbs I like to call that are delivered to you. So this is not to say that you don't take action. There is plenty of inspired action that is taken when you're manifesting your desires and your intentions. They are actions that you take because they are inspired, not because you're just taking action for the sake of taking action. That is the misaligned masculine energy that's scrambling, trying to figure things out and what they should and what should be done. That's coming from a fear blaze, fear blaze, blah, fear based, lackful mindset that if you don't take action, you're not going to get what you want. And that's the opposite of what you want to be doing. You want to be taking action from an inspired place, not from a fearful, lackful place because you're worried about what happens if you don't. That's never gonna turn out good. And so those are the takeaways I wanted to share with you. You can apply this to any business really and you can apply it to all areas of your life. Um, and I wanted to share the intent, what I, what I did, the first business I shared with you, the organic spray tanning studio and why that blew up so quickly for me when I started that and why the woman that I sold it to that took it over completely tanked it um, in like no time, even though nothing changed with the marketing, the clients, the, the, the branding, the product, nothing changed. And I even trained her on it for like 60 days after I sold it. So so nothing changed there except for the intention that was backing the business. When I went into that business, it was an organic spray tan studio. Sort of sounds like a superficial kind of thing, right? But I went into that business because I wanted to help um, women feel better. I set the intention, I walked the perimeter of that uh, studio and I set the intention that every woman that is going to enter the studio is going to feel better about themselves before they leave. They're gonna feel more beautiful, not only about their body, but also they're going to start to cultivate a glow within themselves. Like, and it would be amazing, the women that would come through my organic spray tanning studio, they would be coming, you know, because they're getting engaged to be married and they're going into this next beautiful phase of their life or they're recovering from cancer and you know they just want to feel good about themselves and they're just starting to get back out there again. Um, all of these stories of all these women, or they're going on vacation and it's the first vacation they've had in a long time, they're going to this destination they've never been to before. And everybody came to me and they just felt beautiful before they left. They felt better. I would have little affirmations on the wall reminding them that that you know the importance of being beautiful on the inside and out and things like that and it was um, a very beautiful experience where I saw a revolving door of women literally sprout up overnight coming to my studio that um, was being served at what I believe the highest level at my studio because they were leaving feeling better than when they came. They were feeling better about their body image. They were feeling better about how they felt they looked in a mirror. They were feeling better about you know their self-confidence in general. All of these things were heightened as a result of that studio and that was the intention that I put into the studio and that was the difference that the studio thrived when I was running it. So that being said, I just want to say that these spiritual principles that you work with work. So I am really passionate about helping people work with spiritual laws in a practical way. I love to teach on my seven pillar manifesting formula, as well as a process I call the yin yang sales and creation cycle, energetic marketing and divine business strategies. If that interests you, then I would invite you to hop on my newsletter at sarah-rose.net. I'll put the link above or below this video. And I'd love for you to leave me a comment or any feedback if this resonated with you or if you got value from this video, please like the video or give it a thumbs up uh, depending on wherever you're watching this. Um, throw your comments below or shoot me a DM. I would love to hear from you. I'd love your feedback. And I hope this video finds you well. Namaste.